Well, in its regular legislative session, state lawmakers referred two potential constitutional changes to Arkansas voters. Proposed issue two is referred to as the interest rate amendment. It rolls three concepts into one measure. First, it gives the state legislature permission to change interest rate caps on government bonds and loans with changing market conditions. Secondly, it eliminates a current below market interest rate cap on consumer loans and sets an interest rate cap of 17% on those loans. And finally, the proposal would allow for energy savings financing. This would allow local government units to float bonds paid back by the savings from energy efficiency. Proposed issue number three gives the legislature the authority to determine potential bond issues that might be required if the state has a chance of landing an economic super project. Current law mandates that a prospect must invest $500 million and create 500 jobs to use bonding authority. This new proposal lowers that threshold and gives the state legislature authority to dictate terms. Economic developers say that other states have an advantage over Arkansas with their bonding flexibility, and the state needs this to compete. Well, this week, a group supporting passage of issues number two and three launched a new website, ArkansasJobsNow.org. It has the support of the Arkansas State Chamber of Commerce and other business interests. Joining me is Randy Zook, president of the State Chamber, to talk about these issues. Randy, good to see you. Good to be with you, Robbie. Well, let's talk about issue number three first, because I think it's a little easier one to explain. It's a little less, uh, less, less complicated. What do you think is the problem with the current law? Well, issue three deals with uh, um, um, revising or amending issue or Amendment 82 from 2004 when we passed Amendment 82 that allows Arkansas to issue general obligation bonds to underwrite so-called super projects. If you recall, at the time we were in hot pursuit of the uh, Toyota Motor uh, plant that eventually went to Mississippi and we needed legislation to allow the state to issue bonds to help underwrite the cost of that project. Of course, we were unsuccessful. That project did go to Mississippi, but the amendment did pass overwhelmingly, and the people expressed support for issuance of, of bonds for this purpose. The problem is the amendment included two thresholds, one, a minimum capital investment of $500 million, and two, creation of at least 500 jobs. Those are very burdensome requirements, and they're just, a, they're just a handful of projects in the entire country every year that meet those two qualifying thresholds. So this proposal, issue number three, will amend and remove those two requirements and allow the state to issue general obligation bonds for smaller, more medium-sized projects, where at the present time we're simply we're out of the competition. We can't compete on say a two hundred million dollar project that might create three or four or five hundred jobs we're not in a position to do the some of the financing that's necessary and some of the financing that surrounding states can do like mississippi alabama texas and other states have this vehicle available and we're just not able to do that so we need to we need to give ourselves that capacity and capability well the interest rate amendment issue number two which we've already talked about explained to the audience uh, let's talk about why you think that one is necessary. Why is it as convoluted as it is? Well, there, uh, unfortunately, there are several moving parts in it, but if you really break it down, the fundamental thing it will do is that it will preserve the existing rules on interest rates in Arkansas. We have a federal preemption in place right now which allows credit card companies in Arkansas to... Um, uh, use an interest rate that is competitive nationally, but that exemption expires at the end of this year. All we're proposing to do, or this amendment does, is uh, extend that preemption beyond this calendar year, and it will also allow, most importantly, uh, cities and, and counties and communities to issue bonds for public improvement projects like hospitals, um, libraries, fire stations, jails, all sorts of projects that uh, are necessary to improve our, our community and quality of life. Uh, this this will, will give us the, uh, the interest rate environment that is necessary to be able to issue those bonds. Well, Randy, both of these issues involve placing more trust in state and local government. And right now, I, th I think we've seen through a variety of polling and just the general mood of the electorate that there is some distrust in government. 
Um, do you worry that there might be a, a political environment out there that makes these difficult to pass? Well, I, I think not. I think at the end of the day, the people recognize, the people will recognize that there are important safeguards in place on both these amend, proposed amendments. Uh, on the Amendment 82 uh, issue, it, number three, uh, it starts with the Arkansas Economic Development Commission and the Department of Finance Administration doing an extensive analysis of a proposed project. It would then go to the governor's office, would require the governor's approval and support, and then would have to go to the legislature in either a general session or a, a special session. So you've got lots of safeguards built into that amendment to protect the people's interests, and I think the people will recognize that. Tell me what kind of resources the chamber and other groups uh, that are going to be involved with you guys in the, in the passage of these amendments, tell me what, um, without revealing deep campaign strategies, what are you going to do to raise awareness for this? Well, we're basically going to run a, what we call a grass tops campaign. We're going to try to get as much uh, free media as we possibly can. We are not going to have the resources to run a big uh, TV uh, or media campaign, but we're going to rely on uh, civic club presentations, on community group presentations. We're going to rely a great deal on, on a little bit of direct mail. We're going to basically run a word of mouth campaign across the state. And we're going to look to, to community leadership to help us with this, and we think that'll, that'll prevail at the end of the day. And what do you think are the consequences if one or both of these measures don't pass? Well, unfortunately, it would be sort of a two-foot jump on a four-foot ditch. If, if we pass issue three, uh, we need issue two in order to be able to underwrite or, or issue any of the bonds that would be approved by issue three. And likewise, if we, if we uh, issue, uh, pass issue two, we would only get uh, about half of the effect that we need out of, out of issue uh, two. So one, one, uh, one hand washes the other in this case. So we need approval on both issue two and three. All right, he's Randy Zook. He's the president of the Arkansas State Chamber of Commerce. You're going to be hearing a lot more from him on proposed issues number two and three. Randy, thank you for your time. Thank you, Roby.